Thanks for being with us for another episode of 25 Backstory. I'm Rondell Joseph. He spent most of his reporter life in Illinois, but later jumped to Florida. I sit down with Juan Carlos Van Hul, who discusses his former life as a news anchor and reporter, and now it is not only being a local name in Chicago, but across the country. Take a look. The second favorite was WGN's 2002 theme. Yes, that is my favorite. Yes. Like, yeah, I started actually working at WGN around that same time. I sent you my resume. I don't know if you saw it. I came across it. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I worked at GN 2002 to 2007. So that's when um, they were coming towards the end of that 2002 theme, and they did a new version, a techno version of the nine o'clock yeah um and it was because uh the news director that hired me in, at wgn left like a month later new news director came in he thought the music was kind of old sounding so he went ahead and ordered some quick little techno version of it which i didn't like and then they changed it but yeah it was interesting okay one well, carl so tell me what is it that made you interested in wanting to be a broadcaster at the time um, I always like uh, telling stories, telling people stories, I like writing. Um, I like uh, interviewing people and getting to know them. I'm very much a people person, so I'm fascinated by people's stories. So that always intrigues me. And so it was really kind of up my alley. What technically got me into it was I did an internship in high school. Um, actually, the school that I'm currently working right now as an administrator, I was in high school at the time. And I got an internship at a local TV station. And after that, a little bit of knowledge and, and just time working in a television newsroom, um, the, uh, I just got bit by the uh, whole TV news thing. And I just wanted to do it right then and there. I knew in high school that I wanted to be a television news broadcaster. And I took, as I took a look through your uh, online bio, I went through some archive pages and stuff. You spent most of your TV life in Illinois, basically. Am I correct? Yeah, a lot of years in Illinois. So my first my first job out of college was in Rock Island, Illinois, at WHBF, um, Channel 4, CBS there. And uh, that was my starter market, if you will. And then uh, my hometown is in Palm Beach County, Florida. So I worked in, in West Palm Beach, and I worked then in Miami, but then went back to Illinois to work at WGN. Now, you joined in late 2002 following the departure of former WGN reporter Eddie Aruza. So what was it like not only being the station's reporter, but also the backup anchor whenever, whenever Steve Sanders or Robert Jordan was off? You're either filling in alongside Allison Payne or Jackie Bang. Right. Some of the greats, right? In, in TV, yes. it was Allison Payne and Jackie Bang, who still works at WGN. Um, it, it was an amazing experience for me. So I had just come from Miami, WSVN, Channel 7, the Fox station. And I had done all sorts of reporting, but really never dabbled in anchoring. At the time, WGN had morning, noon, and nine. Those were the only newscasts that they had. So there were less people. And so the opportunity for me to step into the anchor desk was greater than in Miami, actually. And I was very blessed and very lucky that I got to substitute on the anchor desk with Allison Payne on the nine o'clock news whenever Steve Sanders would step out or with Jackie on the weekend shows when uh, Bob Jordan would be out. And so that was quite a neat experience. It was also very neat to work on the nine o'clock news at a time when you didn't have any other newscasts. Now WGN does a lot of news throughout the day and probably the most in Chicago, but we really worked on deadline as a reporter for one nightly newscast at nine o'clock. So that was very neat as well. Of course, and you have covered a lot of stories during your time at WGN, including um, that crash in Elmwood Park in 2005. I know you, Judy Garcia, and Chuck Coppola were all three on that scene doing team coverage. Jackie Bang and Tom Negevin were in for Stephen Allison that night because it was the night before Thanksgiving, of course. What was your vantage point from that story the night in question? <laughs> well, you know, it, it took us three hours to get from Lakeshore Drive to Midway. If you can believe that, in the middle of a snowstorm, it took us three hours because the highway was, was, was blocked. And so we were taking the side streets and everything. So that was first, it took us forever to get there. And so the story was unfolding. And then obviously you see, when you get there, you see this plane 
on the street there, just off the tarmac from Midway. And it was just an incredible experience. It really was like a movie. It was snowing. It was definitely one of the um, bigger stories that I had taken part of, just given the nature of it. And I remember someone was killed in a car and it was just a horrible story, you know, but um, I just remember that, that it took forever to get there because of that snowstorm. Mm. And yeah, I like you had not only covered the Midway, you also covered the uh, crash in Elmwood Park with the Metro train that hit several cars that night before, like in 05. Yeah, it was like, what, two weeks before the uh, Southwest uh, plane hit. Yeah, you, you did your research because I, I, you know, that's such a long time ago. Yes. Gosh, we are talking, uh, gosh, how many years ago? 16 years ago. Almost 16, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was something else. You know, it, um, again, because at the time, WGN had, you know, the one newscast at 9 o'clock and we maybe had four reporters in a good night, um, you really got to cover the big stories. If something big happened, you were on it. And so the Metro accident was the same. And, and uh, that was another tragic story. I, I remember that one. And um, gosh, it, it just all the big stories, there was never a shortage of it. You know, if you worked at a bigger station uh, with more staff, you had to compete to get the big story. But at WGN, I was really on the big story all the time just because of the, na the nature of the staffing there. So I will tell you this, my honest opinion, I felt your hit story was the Dream Reapers cover story in 2007. So what was it going from Fan Hul to Fan Gul? <laughs> This, which story was this again? The uh, Halloween one? Yes, around 2007, the uh, cover story of the Dream Reapers. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh my, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So we spent like an entire night with the Dream Reapers. And this was a haunted house. Uh, gosh, I forget in which suburb, but we dressed up with them, like them and we took part in it and we got a tour of it and like we, we did it all. And that was a lot of fun. So absolutely, that, that was that was fun. So, you know, you run the gamut in, in TV news, as you know, you go from disasters to uh, fun stories. And like in Halloween, you get to dress up like a Halloween character. Um, yeah, it's quite a diverse body of work. We all thought you got kidnapped, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the biggest hit, one of the funniest things, did you see the UFO video? Uh, I think I did. Google WGN UFO video. This is one of the first things that went viral on YouTube. I interviewed this guy um, uh, because there was a story that there were some UFOs or unexplained airplanes flying around O'Hare Airport. And it was in the paper and it was a big story. Um, and so there was nothing to get at the time. It wasn't like the FAA was going to talk about this. So I just got my regular man on the street interview and I interviewed this guy who is, um, was hilarious and you should look it up. It's on Google. It's, it's a very funny video and it went viral. It's got over a million views and this is before things went viral on Google. So on YouTube, sorry. Uh, so now after WGA, you jumped back over to West Palm Beach. So what was it like jumping from Chicago down south, anchoring at CBS 12 in West Palm Beach, Florida? So um, West Palm Beach, Florida is my hometown. And uh, for me, it was a promotion in the sense that I was anchoring full time. And so I was also getting to go back home where all my family lives. So for me, it was a great move. And it wasn't as much as a career move. It was really a personal move. So I love Chicago. I've worked there over five years and it's a great town. Um, and, you know, not too many non-Chicagoans get to work in Chicago. You, there's usually a Chicago connection or you're a Ponzi and you become uh, a Chicago reporter, right? But mm -hmm. uh, so I was very lucky in the fact that I was able to work in Chicago, but my hometown was calling. And for me, it was uh, ability to grow as an anchor and become an evening anchor. And eventually I was a Monday to Friday morning anchor um, at CBS 12 in West Palm Beach. It was a great experience. I, I, I loved it. And certainly I missed my days in Chicago, but it was time for me to go home at the time of that move. And you know, so much has changed since you had left. Steve Sanders and Bob Jordan have both retired from the news business, of course, which is weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny. 
if I would have stayed there, I may have become a main anchor or an anchor five years after the fact, six years. You just never knew because no one was moving on. No one, no one would want to leave a WGN. Uh, Mark Sapelsa left. <laughs> well, yeah, he joined right after I left or as I was leaving. Um, but I, I got to tell you, it was before WGN turned to all news coverage throughout the day and they have mm -hmm. news yet, it was known as a country club of TV news. And because it was just such a great gig, there were, there were fewer newscasts um, and uh, there were certainly fewer pressures, if you will, as a reporter, as an anchor, as, uh, um, as when you worked at WGN during that time until they loaded up with the five, the four, five, six, the you have two hours at midday, which is, I've never heard of that. And obviously the morning show, you know? Yeah, and like back then, because it used to, like back then, it was good that WGN used to be able to not only just be broadcasted in Chicago, but across the country. Yep, my parents watched me. Uh, so not only were you just a local, you were kind of a national name. <laughs> It, it was. And, and I got to tell you, that was the special nature of working at WGN at the time because we were on the superstation WGN, now known as News Nation. But at the time, I would go to Vegas or I would go to California and people would recognize me in the plane and say, you're that Chicago news guy. So it was it was neat in that sense. Yeah. And now you're since you've been out of TV news now, at least, what, seven or eight years now? Going on? Eight years now. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you jumped back, you decided to do work at the school you were an alma mater at. Yeah. So how is... Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, I was just switching careers. So I left CBS 12 here in West Palm Beach, um, gosh, eight years ago. And I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, I was a little bit done with TV news at that time. I, I had done, gosh, over 15 years going um, in, working in TV news. And um, I decided that it was time for me to branch out and do something different. And so um, I got a, a call one day from United Way, which you may, have, you know, is one of the big charities in the country, United Way. And they called me and said, hey, we would love for you to come and work for us. As someone who knows how to speak to people and engage folks, we need a spokesman for the United Way. And so I went and worked for them and, and started in, in the career in development and fundraising. And so I worked there for a few years, and then I got a call out of the blue for the uh, school that I used to work at, which is a nonprofit, and they also have a fundraising position, a development position, and I've been here now, gosh, going on five years. But uh, I always keep my little lady in the background. Here she <laughs> is. This is my uh, Emmy that I won at WGN. Uh-oh. For uh, Best Reporter outstanding achievement and uh this was gosh let's see here what what year was this 2000 i think it was a 2004 2005 yep see. Uh -huh. this is always um a talking thing in my in my office and someone comes in they go like is that a news is that an emmy i'm like it's the real deal <laughs> obviously i know a lot of my fellow chicagoans have a lot many more emmys in the in their uh in their offices, but uh, at least I won one and during my time at WGN. Yeah, that's a good thing because you're you were basically like the main reporter there, other than um, Julian Rue, who now anchors the WGN Midday News with Dina Baer. Yep, and uh, 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 Dana Kozlov was there. Yeah, Dana, she's over at CBS Chicago. And uh, the late Randy Salerno. Uh, May his soul continue to rest. Yep, so it was it was me, Julie. Dana Kozlov and Randy Salerno, uh, the late Randy Salerno, who were the main evening reporters. And then maybe, uh, and Dina Bear at that point was doing the health reporting on the nine o'clock news. So, Which she still does. Yep. And um, and that was it. And then during Dayside, you had, um, gosh, you had obviously um, a couple other names that, that escaped me, but you know, there were only four reporters typically on the night shift, you know, which yeah. is kind of low for Chicago, um, but uh, we did it all, which was great. And of course, like you, you worked alongside Allison, Jackie, um, Tom Negevin, who's also at News Nation. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you also did work with Roseanne Tez on occasion, right? 
Yeah. So I got to fill in a couple of times on the morning show and the noon show. Um, oh, wow. That, that was a lot of fun with, with Roseanne. Whenever Randy would be out, I would fill in. Um, and then later on with Robin, when she be, she was named the, the, the anchor, when Roseanne left to go to CBS too, I believe. Yes. Uh, and then Randy followed her. Um, but yeah, I got to anchor with Robin as well a couple of times. And, you know, it, I'm a pretty straight laced guy. And so, you know, the morning show, you know, you never know what you're going to get. And so um, it was definitely a fish out of water experience for me being a serious journalist and then having to hop on the morning show seat and just laugh all morning long and make fun of yourself, which was unusual for being someone in TV. So that was a lot of fun. All right. So one girls, do you have any like future advice, any advice for anyone who wants to go into the business or like keep their like, just give me some insight. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, obviously the business has changed a lot. I work in TV news um, towards the end of the heyday, if you will, where, you know, people sat down and watched TV news and it was appointment viewing. And especially in the Chicago, in the Chicago market, which is very much a news person's town, things have changed dramatically. And so that's the thing that I would just caution people when they go into TV news is that, it's not what you think it is. Um, and certainly um, just uh, you're navigating a lot of different things, including the, um, the, the politics of the day, which in some, in some respects have made journalists not as respected as they were before. And so it's, it's certainly not what it used to be. And I haven't been in it for a while, but I know that it's changed a lot. So, you know, just be mindful of what you're getting yourself into. TV news is a very rewarding business. You seek the truth. You hold the uh, accountable, pow- um, you hold the powerful accountable, and you're obviously telling people stories, but it's not as easy as it used to be uh, as a news reporter. You know, when you would walk into a room, people, when I would walk into a room, people wanted to know more about me, like, oh, you're the news guy. How's Allison Payne to work with? <laughs> Nowadays, if you're a TV reporter, you walk in a room, you may get egg thrown on your face. So mm-hmm. that's the difference. I would just caution the new people, the new folks that are coming into this business that it's changed dramatically. Mm-hmm. And of course I've been keeping that in mind because everything has changed, especially in the last four or five years since things have been going down with political matters. So a lot of journalists are getting attacked, assaulted. It's, it's sad. It, it is sad because it was, Again, like I, you know, people would, you know, we'd be out in the news van and people would wave at us, you know, on on the Eisenhower and like they, people wanted to know more and they wanted, you know, now when you step out in the public as a news reporter, you don't know who you're, you know, what type of crowd you're running into, what, what their agenda is. Do they think less of you? Do they not respect you? Could they potentially harm you when you're just trying to do your job out in the field as a news reporter? So, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. That's very difficult. Uh, and especially for the new, the newbies going into the business, they need to be aware of their surroundings more. And I, I'm always keeping, keeping aware of my surroundings, whether I'm off the desk or not, because things are crazy. Yeah. Yeah, they are. It's not, it's not a good time to be a journalist. Um, in this type of uh, political arena that we're in right now. Hopefully things will change. Who knows? Yeah, let's hope for the best. And a lot of, because most of the people you see now, they're aging. They're like, I can't do this anymore. I'm putting in my papers early. Yeah. Well, and, and, I, and I decided for myself, it is a young person's business. And I was looking ahead at what's, what does the long term look like for me? And uh, I, I wanted more of a normal life. And so, and sure enough, I have a daughter and I'm married. And so uh, a TV news schedule would not be conducive for a lot of things that I do now. And so definitely there is um, life after TV news as I've found it and I really enjoy it. <laughs> and that's, per- that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Juan Carlos Fonhul, everybody. Thank you, Juan, for actually taking time out of your Monday to sit down and talk with me regarding your backstory in journalism and life after. Of course. Thank you for having me, Rondell. Not a problem. I'll keep in touch with you. All righty. All righty.